Thanks, everybody. Woo! Uh, let's give it up for Georgia Asians up front, baby. Yeah! Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh. Hell yeah. I, uh, I'm wearing my uh, stand-up costume. That's what I'm doing. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I know the McRib is back. <laughs> Surprised to see such a full house. <laughs> I was watching uh, Sports Center. Sports. They showed a uh, footage of a game, some clips. Mick Jagger and Bill Clinton were sitting together at the sporting game. And I said to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't even care about the game right now. I want to know which one of those guys has had more sex. <laughs> I want ESPN to show me those stats. Show me the sexing stats. They go Mick Jagger and Bill Clinton in the top five sexing leaders. Clinton might hold a single season record in sexing. You know what I'm talking about. A little bit about me. I was raised uh, the youngest of three. My brother was 12. My sister was eight when I was born. So my dad at some point in 1981 got a raise. <laughs> I think it was a race. Not sure. You you want the moment of your conception to be a big deal. You want like some celebration sex. You don't want the regular like run of the mill Wednesday night sex. Like, oh, it's time to have a baby. Shit. <laughs> you don't want that. You want something big. Although, if I have to infer from anything, I'm I'm, I'm guessing it was probably just raucous drunk sex. <laughs> Because I'm pretty clumsy. <laughs> Fall a lot, break shit. I'm drunk. <laughs> That's really why I infer it was drunk sex, because I'm drunk. But having older siblings was cool growing up because, uh, you know, rather than, you know, the, the things my peers were talking about, like nursery rhymes, I had night court. Uh, <laughs> John Laro Cat. You know, I was watching all that, I was getting into it. So I was on the playground, I was like, man. John Arquette is a sleaze bag. <laughs> but nursery rhymes are weird, and that's why I'm glad I grew up with the siblings I did, because if you think about nursery rhymes, it's just like weird rhyming that always ends in murder. <laughs> what is that? It's like a bad trip at a Wonka factory. You know, it's like, I'll give you a seasonal one. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife, couldn't keep her, put her in a pumpkin shell, very kept her very well. That is effed. That is effed. I mean, the only way it makes sense is if he married a pumpkin. And then, like, made pumpkin. Eh. You know I mean. But no, the movies, I, I saw Die Hard in the theater at age six. Sergeant Al Powell. Yeah, that was my Mr. Rogers. I learned a lot from the Bond, John McClane, and they, they shared Nakatomi Towers. Uh, but I'm not manly. You know, that's the problem I've learned over the years is like, uh, I'm not manly because I cry a lot. <laughs> and I cry at inopportune times, mainly with movies I've seen over and over again. Like, I don't even, like, give my chance, give myself a chance, like, at the new movies. Like, I should be crying at Social Network or The Town. You know, it's a new movie. <laughs> I should get overwhelmed emotionally. I watch Back to the Future, and when he takes off that radiation suit... <laughs> Shows the boat profess. <laughs> you, you read the letter, man. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't care. He, didn't, he said to hell with it. <laughs> Rudy, I have sciatica, so I know what that janitor went through. I know why you've never seen a game from the stand. <laughs> Not manly. Don't know anything about cars. Every guy wants to know about cars because we think that there's going to be a moment when you're on a date and you get out and you fix the car and the girl goes, I had no idea you knew it was the starter. I want to have a baby. In my case, the car breaks down in a well-lit parking lot. Safe, my girlfriend starts crying because she sees me crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Then I call my dad. <laughs> Fix this, please, now. His dads know everything. My dad's generation, they grew up, like, fixing everything. My dad, you know... He had like he was born, they gave him like a baby crescent wrench. <laughs> like when my dad was born, they gave him like the same size wrench that a Lego man would have. Like a little Lego wrench. Like change your own diapers, big guy. <laughs> That's why MacGyver existed, because dad people like my dad got home from work and they're like, I'm too tired to fix anything. Let me just watch a guy fix shit and blow it up. <laughs> It's just not fair, you know. The, the times are changing. When my, you know, if I'm on the street with my dad, which happens a lot because he's homeless. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. <laughs> yeah. He sees beautiful cars because uh, cars for my dad were like beautiful when he was growing. Oh, look at that Mercury. Oh, look at that Buick. Oh man, it's gorgeous. When I get to be his age, it's not gonna have the same ring. When my kids just like, Dad, what is that? I'm like, oh. 84 Tracker. 84 Geo Tracker. Classic. A classic and a beauty. That vinyl, attachable, and detachable rear windshield was specific to that model. Specific. And finally, I was at the bus stop because I try to take public transportation as best I can. That's why I moved to L.A. <laughs> Love riding the bus. <laughs> Saw an ad for Muscle Milk. Anybody know what Muscle Milk is? A lot of I mean, go to the gym. A lot of worker, a lot of worker outers. You guys work out. <laughs> muscle Milk. Uh, it's like a milk-based beverage. It has no dairy in it at all. It's like vegan. I don't know what that means. Uh, but it, the bus, the, the ad said, uh, go from couch potato to cougar bait. <laughs> And that's why I joined the gym, gave up pizza and beer, because I wanted to turn this into a temple. And the only people I wanted to allow into that temple were 44-year-old women with two kids and Botox injection scars. <laughs> I'm Mike Trady. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe it's going to run, bitch, right?